Carpet is one of the most specified products there is, but there's a lot more to it than just simply picking out a color and a pattern. In today's video, we break down specifying carpet and discuss what the best options are for your project. Stay tuned. Hello there, my name is Kelsey. I am the founder and creative director of Kelsey Design Studio, a full service interior design firm specializing in commercial spaces for small and boutique style businesses. Welcome back to our design video series where we create video content for designers and clients about everything commercial interior design. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, follow us on Instagram, and check out our website at www.klsy.design where you can sign up for our email newsletter. In that newsletter, you'll receive access to our designer cheat sheets. Those are free printable PDFs for you as a designer to reference when you're designing. There will be a cheat sheet for this video, so if you want access to that, I will leave a link to do that in the description box. Today, I am joined by my very good friend, Stephanie from Pat Craft. She's here to discuss carpeting with us, how to specify it, what the different kinds are, and how to specify sustainably. Stephanie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, and, super excited. And thank you for having us in your beautiful showroom. Yeah, absolutely, anytime. First off, tell me a little bit about Pat Craft and your role here with them. Yeah, absolutely. So Patcraft is a complete flooring solutions provider. We are a brand under the Shaw Industries umbrella, which is one of the largest flooring manufacturers in the world. They have a residential division, we have a turf division, but Patcraft falls under the commercial division. So we're one of the commercial brands. As an account manager for Patcraft in New York City, I work with architects, designers, and flooring contractors to make the best flooring selections for commercial projects. So before we get into the specifics of specifying carpet, what are some of the general benefits that designers can expect when specifying carpet? Why is carpet a good solution for any space? The number one reason I would say is acoustics, right? So really the best um, flooring solution for a space if acoustics are a concern is carpet. We have other solutions if resilient has to be specified and you can use an underlayment, but really carpet's gonna absorb the most sound within a space. The other reason people would specify it is really for the design. So we have uh, a lot of different options running line in our line, of course, that are designed by our amazing designers in Georgia. But you also, as a designer, are able to kind of play with it, you know, change out a yarn color, we can do customs so you have a lot of options aesthetically and then also cleanability you definitely want to specify a solution dyed carpet in any commercial space where there's going to be high traffic and what that means is if you think of a carrot versus a radish so a carrot is the same all the way through um, but a radish is not so a solution dyed yarn is the same all the way through and that's inherently going to be much more stain resistant than any other types of dye methods i've never heard that <laughs> analogy and i love it yeah, so it's, much it's one of my good tidbits but any carpet person will tell you that so let's get into the different types of carpet what are they so there are a few options the number one most popular, especially in commercial, is carpet tile. So that's become more popular because it's easy to replace. So, you know, if there's a major spill or issue in a certain area, you can just pull up a few tiles and then replace those. Also, what's cool about carpet tile is there's different shapes, so that helps you get that sort of different aesthetic. So there's plank, you know, tile, we have 24 by 24. At Patcraft, we actually have a facet shape, which is like a diamond shape. So you can kind of do- Oh, really? Yeah, some I've fun, fun different installs with different shapes. And then the other type of carpet is Broadloom. And we see that specified often in maybe TI, maybe lower cost projects, but then on the other side, in more hospitality. So there's a lot of custom Broadloom that you see in you know, boutique hotels or even hotel chains. And we have running line Broadloom styles as well but we do see a lot of customs for Broadloom being specified. Another type is walk-off. So we have walk-off carpet tile and Broadloom at Patcraft. What's good about that is, you know, you put that in, in the entryways and it's made with this scrubber yarn that's meant to actually take the dirt off before it gets to the rest of the building. So that you also, it helps also to save on maintenance throughout the space. I feel like walk-off carpet is one of those things that people, it's kind of like an afterthought people don't really think about, but it's so important to the space not only to keep the rest of your floors yeah. clean, people kind of wiping their feet, but correct me if I'm wrong, air quality and just like the overall health of a space. Absolutely. Um, at least from my sustainability experience, having a walk-off mat can can promote the um, the air quality of a space. Yeah, yeah, no, you're definitely right. Um, and overall, just lifetime of a space. So 
if you don't have lock off, you know, the products that are throughout the space are probably going to wear quicker than if you did because it would stop a lot from getting to the rest of the building, especially yeah, even like, you know, spread of dirt and things like that. So those are kind of the three main types. You also can specify adding an attached cushion to it to any of our carpet tile or our broad loom, and that would additionally help with acoustics as well as comfort underfoot. Mm -hmm. um, and so a, a cushion underneath the carpet to give it a little bit more height, a little bit more cushion. Right. Yeah, so there are a lot of options that you can do just depending on the type of space you're working on, who's going to be in that space, what's important to them, the inhabitants and the designers and things like that. The difference between carpet tile and broadloom, you mentioned that if you spill something on a carpet tile, it's easy, you can just pick up that tile and replace mm -hmm. it. Um, what are some other, I guess, pros and cons of each of them? Well, one I always think of, which is pretty specific to New York, it depends on the freight elevator situation. If you think about a huge broad loom roll, like if the freight elevator can't fit that up to the 19th floor where they're maybe doing a renovation, then, you know, that might not work for the space. That is such a New York <laughs> Not New York specific problem, but a problem yeah. that we have so often yeah. that is like the worst thing exactly. ever. Yeah. Or even like getting something up the stair, like even a piece of furniture, getting a piece of furniture up the stairs in your own apartment. Yes. It's, it's something terrible. that you need to think about. Yeah, I feel like you never think about it until you're in the moment and you're like, this isn't gonna fit. <laughs> Literally in the moment yeah. and your installer's like, what? the hell <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then I will say budget so typically it I mean it depends on the style and the yarns that it's made from but some of our more cost effective or, or cost friendly collections have our broad limb but we also have budget friendly carpet tile and, and just in general that's kind of the preferred in commercial spaces but again we're seeing it mostly in hospitality um, and TI spaces for broad limb. Talk to me a little bit about the actual construction of carpet. Every carpet manufacturer is going to have their own proprietary backing so for Patcraft and Shaw Industries ours is called EcoWorks. Completely PVC free which is great sustainable for sustainable purposes and then we also have a lighter weight backing called StratoWorks that's also meant to help with cost and because it's lighter weight we can fit more tiles within one box so you can also save a little bit on freight and for sustainable purposes as well there. And then the yarn type. So there's a lot of different types of styles with carpet tile. Regular loop is most common, but there are some cut pile styles. So that's gonna kind of give you that plushier look. Think about it being like cut off. So it kind of has that more plush look. It's not the loop side, it's the bottom side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it kind of has that plushier look. You see it a lot in maybe retail spaces or even in corporate offices. I've seen uh, if you just want maybe like a simple solid look, but kind of have a little bit of elevated texture and plushness. But the regular loop carpet tile is kind of the most popular. It's the most durable. Because if you think about not the loop being uh, up front, but the, the bottom part, they can crush over time. Then we have tip shearing. At Packraft, we have a couple collections where you actually use a mix of both regular loop and tip shearing to kind of create, you know, a different aesthetic. So there are just some different pile heights that you can play with. And obviously, if something's really plush, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that in a high traffic area. Even maybe wool area rugs. Um, depending on the edge type, they might not be ADA compliant if they're too thick and plush. But sometimes you might want that in like a hospitality, you know, type space where you want it to feel more residential and homey, mm -hmm. but then still, you know, specify products that are gonna hold up. Yeah, definitely. With carpet, it's that thing where you really need to be mindful of not only like the cut pile um, for the durability, but ADA is so mm -hmm. important. If you have a carpet that's too thick, yep. it's it's hard for people to exactly. trip over it. Yeah. Um, I know I've tripped over my fair share of rugs yes. in my days. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so that's also something to keep in mind. I mean, rugs are another genre of carpet that I guess I didn't even touch on. And there's so many different options, but what we can do as well is create an area rug from any of our running line collections. So we can actually make an area rug out of carpet tile, which is pretty cool. And then you can select the edge type. Surge is pretty popular, but we also have an ADA compliant rubber edge. So that is important. And then even just carpet in general, if it's going to be in a space that's high traffic, you definitely want something that's ADA compliant. So all of our, our carpet is nylon, which I didn't mention earlier, and they're all ADA compliant. Walk me through the process that a designer would go through to actually specify a carpet, either with you guys or with another manufacturer. What does that look like? I always say, you know, reach out and hopefully we'll be able to have a conversation or if you have the information, I ask that you share it so that I can kind of help 
put you as a designer in the right direction. So I would like to know, you know, what type of space is it? In what segment is it? A healthcare project? Is it corporate? Is it multifamily? And then from there, you know, what type of spaces are you are you looking to put carpet in? Is it going to be in the entrance? Is it going to be in the office spaces? Is it going to be in the open areas? So I'll kind of do some some digging to find out what you're really looking for and what the, the need is for the space. Next, I would ask if you had a palette already selected or any inspiration images, colors that you're looking at. So that way I can kind of help gauge, you know, what collections are going to make sense for this project. But then kind of from there, I would pull products that make sense for those spaces, right? So I would not select wool area rugs if it's going to be, um, you know, a high traffic ADA yeah. compliant area and then depending on the budget as well. So I would also ask if there is a flooring budget. Sometimes there's not. Um, sometimes they might know, you know, we're not looking for the most expensive. We might need something mid-level and or you might have no idea. And then maybe from there I can, you know, pull a couple, a couple options from different price buckets. Do we need to specify the backing specifically? Because I have been on some projects where the contractor has asked for that? And if so, what you know, kind of advice would you give to specifying that? Yeah, I would say, I would as, as a designer, you could ask the contractor maybe what he's worried about if he asked for that information. Um, but it could even go to the point of maybe they want to make sure it's a cushion back and, um, and those types of things. So our regular hardback might not be what they want, so then we would have to price it with the attached pad. So when a carpet is installed, it is directly glued to the floor. Is that the only way that a carpet can be installed or are there no. different ways? No, <laughs> good question. <laughs> there are different ways. So pressure sensitive glue is, is the most popular because as I mentioned with carpet tile, you want to be able to pull it up and replace if you need to, but you also want to know that it's going to stay where it's installed. So that's, that's the most typical adhesives. That's a glue down, but we have other solutions. If you need something more temporary, we have what's called a lock work. So they're basically sticky tabs that you can use and you stick one side to the carpet tile and one side to the floor and you put them on the corners of all the carpet tiles and that will not damage the subfloor. So, you know, mm. say you're working on a project and the tenant's like, we're only going to be here one year. What can we use that won't damage the subfloor? That's a great option. It's like a command strip for yeah. your apartment. Yeah, because we I love that. Every single year in New York because they jack up our rents yeah, every year. Yeah, exactly. It's like flooring command strips. Yep, yep. <laughs> and I have carpet tile in my apartment and we do use that, so <laughs> it works. <laughs> and then we also offer dots as well. Similar idea, they're basically dot stickers, but they will b bind to the floor a little bit stronger. Um, so they will damage the subfloor. So they're just different options depending on what the need is of the project. As you, I'm sure, know, sustainability is such a huge issue in our industry and something that we constantly need to be thinking about, both from a manufacturer's perspective and from a designer's perspective. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about some of the ways that Patcraft is using sustainability in their manufacturing practices, in their you know, take-back programs, and kind of how designers can sustainably specify carpet. So I will say one another thing that I do love about our company is that we are very sustainably focused and and rightfully so. One of our VPs told me recently that the top two contributors to US landfills are baby diapers and carpet. This is why we need to stop having children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a lesson there. But, uh, so obviously I don't have a baby so I don't I, I don't contribute to the diapers, but I can help with the carpet. Not until you're, you yeah. know, in your older age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be part of the problem. At this time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give um, us like 40 years. <laughs> so that was pretty shocking, honestly. And as I think as a, an industry of architecture and real estate and construction, we really can make a difference if we all start to take these little steps towards doing the right thing as we design and build. So with carpet, um, if you're ever working on a project where there's a ton of existing carpet, we as a manufacturer really want it back. And I know other manufacturers have similar programs in place as well. As a company, we can only take back a Shaw product because we know what's in it. And we actually have machines in Georgia where we put the carpet in that's already been used maybe for five, 10, 15 years. We grind it up and then we recycle it into new material, which is pretty cool. So we're kind of creating that circular economy. And because we're doing that, Last year we launched a completely new yarn type that's called Eco Solution Q100 Nylon. So, that was a tongue twister yeah, you had to practice. Yeah. <laughs> so what that means essentially is it's completely made from recycled yarn. So the more we get back, the more of that yarn we're able to use and then the more of our product line we're able to basically make from recycled yarn, which I think is pretty cool. Because Patcraft is a sub-brand of Shaw, 
you guys will take back any Shaw pro, like any Shaw carpet, even if it's not pack craft. Correct. Yes. So EcoWorks, as I mentioned earlier, is our backing. So any EcoWorks backing product could be Shaw contract, could be pack craft. We would take it back. You know, if you're working even with a demo and maybe you don't know how that's all going to go down, we're happy to connect with them or the contractors just to learn a little bit about maybe what the demo scope is. And if there is an opportunity to recycle carpet, we would love to take it back. This is like something that I think about all the time and I feel like it's it's so overlooked because like literally you know you sign the drawings the contract gets in there, they just start ripping things out how would you know if a carpet is a Shaw carpet or like would you guys come and look at it would we send you a photo yeah. like how would we as the designer help that process yeah. and help figure out what it is no that's a great question any of those things you mentioned if you snap a photo and send it to me if you're able to like maybe go to a corner and peel up a corner and take a picture of the backing then we'll know immediately. On the back of all of ours actually has the recycling phone number, which is pretty cool. Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, most people don't. So um, so yeah. But if you, once you take a picture of the backing, we'll know immediately. If you take a picture of the space, we could potentially know immediately. Or we'll come and walk it. If you're like, hey, I know it's a big project. I'm going. I'm happy to come with you to the job site and see. And then maybe I could even connect with facilities or whoever is going to do the demo earlier on, because the earlier the better. And if it's a significant amount of it's any amount over 500 yards, we will send a truck to the job site completely free of charge to pick up the carpet material and bring it back to Georgia so we can reuse it. That's huge. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Which is very cool. So I feel like there is this perception of carpet and especially commercial design, which is like why I'm doing a lot of this, is to break a lot of the stigma of commercial design is that you're always specifying the gray carpet in the office and it all looks the same and it, you know, it doesn't really matter what who you specify because it all looks the same in the end. Yeah. And what I love about Pat Craft and the products that you guys sell, you have those like very simple basic gray carpets for the clients that still want that, but you also, uh, especially recently, have come out with a lot of products that are different and you can be a little bit more adventurous with, yeah. with your carpet specification. So I always love working with you guys and seeing what you come out with. Yeah, well, we appreciate that. We have a really awesome design team um, down in Georgia who design all of our beautiful products and yeah I think we've won Neocon and HIP Awards the last five seven years which is awesome so agreed it, it is exciting to have fun products to talk about but we also have those basics which is nice so if you ever need something that's even quick ship or maybe low low cost we have it but if you want something different um, and you know with high design and, and something that's going to stand out we have that too. Did we meet at Neocon this past year? Or, yeah. That was like where we met. Yes, it was. I, like, <laughs> I was thinking that recently too. Yeah, it was. That's like so, that literally wasn't even a year ago. No, I, I remember like, I got your card and I was like, oh, I want to follow up with her. I loved her. I know. I like, I walked in and I, you like introduced yourself. And I was like, I feel like we've emailed before. Yeah. We've never met in person and we just like hit it off. And now <laughs> here yeah, we look are. At us. Here we are. Look at us. <laughs> yeah. I just had that like. I did too. Epiphany. Yeah. I, I thought about that recently. That's so funny. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here and for the time and energy into doing this. It was like so valuable. Thank you. And yeah. Thank you for having me. If someone wants to learn a little bit more about Pat Craft or they want to find their local rep, how can they do that? Yeah. So you can actually go on our website, patcraft.com, and there's a rep locator. So you can type in wherever you are in the country and your, your local rep will show up. You can also follow us on Instagram, Pat Craft Floors and LinkedIn. And then my personal Instagram is those floors though. So follow me there. Follow her on Instagram. <laughs> I post a lot of local, um, you know, projects that we're working on or new collections. Um, so you can reach out to me there as well as my email, which is stephanie.strickland at patcraft.com. And if you would like to support the show, you can be sure to like this video and follow us on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, and also don't forget to check out our website at www.klsy.design to sign up for our email newsletter, or you can click the link in the description box to get access to our designer cheat sheet. And that's all we have. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Woo! And we'll do a little cheers. Thanks, mom. Thanks, Kelsey's mom. <laughs>